Hello, it is Wednesday, September 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday crossword, so a midweek mid-difficulty puzzle. And as you can maybe infer from my, my background surroundings, I'm back home um, briefly just for a few days and then I I'm have to head out again. So um, hopefully that won't result in too many substitute videos, but it might happen once or twice again over the next week. Um, in any case, thanks for bearing with me on my travels. And today we're going to be solving, as I said, a midweek mid-difficulty themed crossword. And this midweek mid-difficulty edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Victoria Rojishka, Kathleen Quinn, Quotidia File, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support. They do sustain this channel and keep this series going. I really am grateful to them for that. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to become one yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. Um, I'm going to try and get back to getting those bonus videos out for patrons. Um, I have to catch up on things today. I'll do my best to get those, uh, to catch up on, on what I owe the patrons as soon as possible. So again, thank you for your patience. And thank you if you are a patron at any level, I really do appreciate it. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video, of course, to that, uh, to which there's also a link to the, uh, where there's also a link to the um, Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community you can join, uh, talk about these puzzles, these crosswords, other puzzles and other crosswords and uh, everyone there is very nice. So you can join that in, in the link as well. And then finally, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That would be a big help. And thank you to everybody who's done so. All right, so let's get on to the crossword. This is, as I said, a Wednesday themed crossword. I think this is the fifth uh, crossword constructed by Blake Sloniker for the New York Times crossword. And it was edited, of course, as always by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what's in store for us today. 1964 title role for Anthony Quinn. Was that Zorba the Greek? I've never actually seen that film, but let's see. Let's sharply turns back the other way. Yeah, okay. So Ziggs or Zags, probably Zags, I suppose, because Ziggs is the first one, I guess. So Zag would be the other, but let's look at this and see if we can confirm that. Like more than half the Earth's population, I'm Asian from the continent of Asia. I would assume that to be correct. So I think this probably is Zorba. And let's look at the crosses there. Worker Welfare Group. OSHA, which is a U.S. federal agency, the Occupational Safety uh, and Health Agency or something like that. And then Run is, uh, oh no, I see, Run Blank, Run Riot. Maybe you run riot over a crossword. You solve it within in record time. Start of a paint job, a base layer or a base coat. There we go. You could lay down a base coat of paint. And a myrmecologist's specimen, uh, an ant. So a myrmecologist would study ants. And to suddenly cut off all communication with, but do so nicely. Um, uh, I don't know. So ghosting is a term used to refer to suddenly cutting off communication with somebody, but do so nicely. I don't know. There's sort of... First thing that comes to my mind is Casper the Friendly Ghost, but I don't think that has anything to do with the answer. Shankar at Woodstock. Ravi Shankar, the sitar player, played at uh, the Woodstock Festival, music festival. So Ghost, yeah, still not seeing it. Something that may be up one's sleeve. You might have an ace up your sleeve, as they say. And to draw out is to, I was going to say educe, but that doesn't really work. Um... Adduce? I don't think that works either. 6 set in tennis lingo. A sweep? That's could been, it was a complete, uh, you, you ran riot over your opponent with a 6-0 set. Bavarian ba. Ach, so kind of, is that right? Because Bavaria would really be the Czech Republic. I think it's probably the sort of Germanic ach. I could be missing something there. Where to do one's bidding, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll delete that. Some fancy way. Yeah, this might not be right. Some fan Is this sweep? I think it probably is. Uh, some fancy work. Do not know what that's getting at. And so far is 
Yet, it hasn't happened so far. It hasn't happened yet. Where to do one's bidding, maybe. Oh, eBay. Maybe this isn't sweep. You could bid on goods on the website eBay. So what is the 6-0 set in tennis? I guess tennis lingo. Sweep isn't necessarily tennis lingo. I suppose I don't really know tennis lingo. So I don't know what that is. So maybe we put ach back in here. And then some fancy work. Oh, lace. Kind of fancy embroidered lace, maybe. And draw out is elicit. Oh, right. Of course. That's what I should have thought of first. You elicit a reaction from somebody. Oh, so ghost write. To ghost somebody the right way, I guess. And then that refers to the phrase ghost write, G-H-O-S-T-W-R-I-T-E, to uh, sort of write a book, for instance, on someone else's behalf without being... Well, I guess sometimes those people are credited, sometimes they aren't. I guess I guess if they're ghostwritten, they're never credited. It would be co-writing if they were credited. Um, anyway, so the 6-0 set is a bagel. All right, okay. That must be what that's called. And then cordial shipbuilders are civil engineers or civil... They're, so... Presumably, there will be another homophone, another word. You know, we'll be we'll be spelling a homophone of a a common phrase as we did with ghost right. But I don't yet know what that is. So let's move on. As to in R E maybe on a, on, a, on a memo to sort of indicate the subject of the memo. It's as to that. I'm not certain, but the in is pretty likely. Rude rejoinder popularized by the Fonz of 1970s TV. So this is. Referring to the word, oh, the, the show Happy Days. Did the font say step on it? No, I guess he didn't. Sit on it? That's sort of familiar. Sit on it. That could be right. Let's look at the crosses there. Maxims are sayings or uh, saws. An old saw, an old maxim, an old sort of well-worn bromide, a saying that somebody is commonly deployed. So like... if. Cheering audiences are a roar, so like cheering audiences could be a roar, the adjective, and then lightens up. I'm not sure about that. And travel kit filler. Travel kit filler. Filler. Pens a seafaring tale. Writes. If you pen something, you write it. So writes something. And then again, we'll have a, a homophone of some sort in here. But let's look at this again. Toilet uh, travel kit filler. Toilet trees. I guess toilet trees would fill up your travel kit. Uh, you know, sort of toothpaste and other, uh, you know, tooth toothbrush and comb and all sorts of things like that. Lightens up. Could it be irradiates? Like, I think wasn't there was something to do with the radiation in the crossword just within the last couple of days. I think I don't remember exactly what it was, but maybe uh, radiate with you know, radiation or, or, I don't know. Can you refer to the sun as irradiating us with its rays? I don't know. That would sound, I think, a little intense, but I, maybe it's grammatically correct. Anyway, Sal Paradise, narrator of On the Road. There we go. The uh, Kerouac novel. And then flap of skin hanging from a bovine's neck. Not sure about that offhand. Sacramental Friars. Something to do with rites, like a sacrament in, in a religious context. Maybe. We'll come back to it. Oxford and Surrey and Richard III. Earl of Oxford and Earl of Surrey. Earls. Uh, let's see if this works. Second rule of waste reduction. So reduce, reuse, recycle, I think, is the are the kind of three... Um, commonly stated rules of waste reduction. So reuse would be the second of those. Con ed eg abbreviation. That's a, um, I always think of that as being the kind of um, electricity provider for the New York area. Con Edison, con, I think consolidated Edison is what that would unpack to. And then here we have, uh, 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 oh, and, and sorry, util for utility. So utility provider, um, because we're abbreviating it as per the clue. Uh -huh. do not know what that's getting at. Phonetic initialism along Canadian roadways, ESO. 
you do get ESO here in the UK as well, actually. Um, the as I've <laughs> as I said many times before, it comes from the old uh, American company, I guess, a Standard Oil being abbreviated to SO and then the sort of phonetic pronunciation of those letters. You don't really see it in the US as far as I know anymore. In the public eye, uh, if someone or something's in the public eye, it's seen and then, uh -huh. is it hell no? Oh, as in you're sort of saying, uh, 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 you're saying absolutely no, hell no, there's no chance of that happening. I think that's, I think that's the answer. So what is the, Flap of skin hang from bovine's neck. I really don't know that. And here we have scale units. Could be kilograms, maybe. I don't know. Any unit, any sort of unit of measurement, I suppose. Um, not sure. LBs, pounds. Doesn't doesn't look very good at the crosses, does it? Take off to soar to to take off to fly through the air, and dirt digging research for short. I think in political terminology, this is sometimes referred to as oppo, opposition research. So you try to dig up dirt on your political opponents, perhaps. Let's look at this. Exabox, say you opt, you make a choice. You opt for this thing rather than the other. And back on a cruise. So I think this means um, if you're on a cruise, you're on a boat, and the back of a boat nautically could be referred to as its aft. So something up one sleeve. Oh, right. Didn't we have ace? We did. Something that may be up one sleeve was that, and this one is the slightly differently phrased, something up one sleeve with a question mark. So what is that? I mean, it won't be ace again. I'm, I guess it's fortunate that this one was ace because uh, apparently there's another three letter word starting with A that can <laughs> essentially fill this clue. Uh, something up one sleeve. Oh, your arm. Your arm. <laughs> your arm is literally up your sleeve. This one's a bit punnier, which is why it has the question mark indicator there. Okay. Well, there we have it. Radio station on TV. Oh, there's an old, I've never actually seen this, but there's an old sitcom called, uh, I think it might be WKRP in Cincinnati, which is, I didn't actually remember if that was a radio station or a television station fictionally, but uh, I guess that's uh, WKRP. I guess that sounds like a radio station call, name, call sign. So call name. Um, so I think it's this. I think it's WKRP. Let's look at the crosses, see if we can confirm or deny that. Pens a seafaring tale, rites of passage. There we go. So this is referring to the phrase rites of passage, R-I-T-E-S, which, oh, that's funny. Oh, these, are, these must all involve the word rites, right or right, right or rites, or a homophone of them, because we have ghost rite, rites of passage. Here we have another uh, sacramental friars, right, the Wright brothers. <laughs> Yes, referring to the Wright brothers, W-R-I-G-H-T, um, Wright, the, who, who uh, famously created an aircraft uh, and successfully flew it. But here we have sacramental friars. We have brothers who perform sacraments, so brothers in a religious context to perform religious rites. Scale units. Oh, no, this is a dewlap. I do know this word. Flap of skin, hang fruit. So the... The uh-huh is well no because okay so I was I was taking it as the kind of um, I don't know pointed uh, -uh, uh but in fact I think it's more uh uh, -uh the sort of well I'm considering it well no so there we go and a dewlap is the flap flap of skin hanging from Beaumont's neck I did actually know that I just it's not part of my active vocabulary so it didn't occur to me and then the scale units were indeed lbs for pounds all right let's keep going what else can we do. Canning tomato, aroma tomato. Aroma tomatoes are often canned, and you could use them in uh, tomato sauce. For real could be... Not sure. So what was this one? Cordial shipbuilders. Civil rights. Because you could have a shipwright. So S-H-I-P-W-R-I-G-H-T. Someone who uh, constructs ships. But we're here referring to the phrase civil rights, meaning... Um, sort of affordances owed you legally. Um, and uh, we're combining them to make our homophone civil rights. They are shipwrights who are very civil to, with one another, I suppose, who are decent. All right, prefix with gender could be cisgender, so not transgender. And then for real could be... Um, oh, kosher. 
Right. Okay. So we're using kosher, not in a, you know, maybe in the strictest religious sense, but to mean everything's all right. Everything's, it's, yep. The thing I said is for real, it's kosher. Everything's, everything's good. Horses watering spot is a, I don't know. And what a marathoner may do around mile 20. So what's a marathon? 26 point something miles, 26 point six maybe or something like that. Um, not sure. Cry from one who's fuming. Cry from one who's fuming. I wonder if we have any more theme clues here. Oh, no, I think those all had question marks, didn't they? So, no. Oozes. Seeps, maybe? A liquid oozes through a gap. And jokester is a cut-up, a real cut-up. I think that was in the crossword recently as well. A uh, horse's watering spot is a trough. There we go. So a horse could drink from a trough. And not that would be this. Not that thing, but this thing. The rhyme of the ancient mariner. There we go. And then Great Plains people are the Oto. Um, there's a, a native people. And then what a marathoner may do around mile 20 is hit the wall, maybe? They're just completely tired out. They're hitting a wall of, of, of internal resistance, perhaps. Classroom projectile maybe is a wad. You wad up some paper and sort of into a spitball and spit it at somebody. And cry from one who's fuming. I'm outraged, right? You could be fuming with anger. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, you're, there's fumes coming from an engine or something. But no, I'm outraged. You're just fuming mad. And kind of counter in a supermarket, a deli counter. Superman's baby name, uh, is it Call L? I think that I think that's right. I've certainly encountered this before. Health bar shelf mate, score. Oh, is a score? Oh no, sorry. I was thinking health bar. I think a score isn't a health bar, is it? It's chocolate. But no, it's a Heath bar shelf mate. So two different kinds of chocolate bar: score and Heath. I don't think I've ever eaten either of those. And many links are. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. A fence sitter's question. Should I? Should I do this thing? I'm on the fence. Should I solve this crossword? I think I will. Many links are sausages. You could have sausage links. There we go. All right. And lemony quaff is... Lemony quaff. I'm not sure. Obeys to heed someone's warning, perhaps. And novelist Chang something Lee. Do I know this novelist? Doesn't ring a bell offhand. Let's look at the crosses. Makes even. Ties up. You tie a game. Makes even. Not sure about that. Swindles. You con somebody. Maybe you swindle them. And tooth trouble. Yes, tooth trouble could be a toothache. And a Georgetown athlete. Ahoya. I've certainly seen this enough times in the crossword to have internalized it. So the Georgetown athletes are the Hoyas. Uh, that's a university, U.S. university. And then North Holland Cheese Town, Edom, uh, known for Edom Cheese, its namesake. And then a marathoning powerhouse, Kenya, certainly produces many uh, successful marathoners. And a black tea region, uh, famously, is Assam. So you have black Assam tea. And rock steady precursor, so you have the Jamaican music genre, ska, which precedes the um, related music genre, rock steady. And then... It's a plan, and what might be said of 17, 23, 35, and 48 across? Sounds good. Sounds good. I think that's correct, because these are homophones. They sound correct, even though they're spelled. Well, I suppose they, um, well, they do, they do look and sound like what they look like, but they also sound like common phrases. So they sound good to us. They sound like things we recognize. I think that's what this is getting at, basically makes even a trues, as in a payment or a, uh, a level uh, surface in, you know, masonry or something. You could true up a, uh, an account. So what was this again? Lemony quaff. Why don't I see what that is? I just don't seem to. Let go. Syrupy stuff is sap from a tree, for instance. And Good Grip's kitchen brand, it must be OXO. Which is, which is a kitchen brand. Uh, they must have a line called a good grips, maybe rubber, rubber gripped implements. And then let go is axed. Right, okay, you were let go from your job, you were axed. There we go. So, oh, so a shandy. 
is a lemony quaff, um, uh, beer and lemonade. And then a nosegay is a flower. It's a, it's a posy. So I think, this, have, I, have I missed any crosses? Oh, we did. We did. Yes. Sorry. We did miss novelist Chang Ray Lee. So there we go. All right. Uh, did we miss anything else? I don't think so. I'm going to put this in. There we have it. That was the Wednesday crossword. I would say certainly a bit of a step up in diff- difficulty from the last two days, but we got through it fine with these nice homophones, our sounds good theme. <clears throat> our ghost right when you suddenly cut off all communication with someone, but do so nicely. Our civil rights, our cordial ship builders, our rites of passage, uh, when one pens a seafaring tale. The Wright brothers, our sacramental friars, all of these comprise our sounds good theme. So there we go. A nice, solid midweek, mid difficulty uh, Wednesday crossword. I think it was as as expected, a step up in difficulty from the early week puzzles, but not brutally difficult. Let me know how you fared with this one. Did it sound good to you? Did it look good to you? Did it solve well, I guess, to you? Uh, and there we have it. That's it. I should, I, I will certainly be back tomorrow for the Thursday crossword. So I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm-hmm.